It came to pass, as mankind began to multiply on the earth, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive, and they took wives for themselves as they pleased. And the Lord God said, My spirit will not live in man forever, for they are flesh. Therefore, their lifespan shall be one hundred and twenty years. And in those days, the Nephilim were on the earth. These were mighty men of old, men of renown. And God saw that the people on earth were very wicked. The intentions of their hearts were only evil. And God regretted that he had created mankind. I will destroy mankind, whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and everything that creeps and the birds of the air. For I am sorry that I ever made them. Among all the wicked people of the earth, there was a man who found favor with the Lord God. His name was Noah, and he walked with God. He was a direct descendant of Seth through eight generations. Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, and Lamech, whose son was Noah. Noah had three sons named Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And God spoke to Noah. The earth is filled with violence. Because of this, I will destroy that which I have created. Make for yourself and your family an ark of gopher wood. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. It shall contain three levels, and within each level you shall make rooms. At the top of the ark you shall make a window, and in its side a door. Then you will cover the ark with pitch, inside and out. For behold, I myself will cause the waters to flood the earth and destroy every man and beast under heaven. Yet I will establish my promise with you. For I have seen that you are not given to wickedness like other men. You are righteous before me and those around you. You will enter the ark along with your wife, your sons and your sons' wives, and you only shall be saved. Of every living creature you shall gather, of every kind of livestock, wild beast, and creature that crawls, and you shall bring them into the ark. You shall take seven of each clean animal, a male and its mate, and two of each of the unclean animals, a male and its mate. And you will take seven of each kind of bird, a male and its mate, and keep them all alive with you and your family to repopulate the earth. And you shall gather enough food for your family and for all the animals. Noah did just as God had commanded him. And when Noah was 600 years old, he entered the ark with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives. And all of the animals that were gathered together entered two by two, male and female alike, 
And then the Lord God closed the door of the ark. After seven days, the fountains of the earth burst, and the windows of heaven opened, and it rained on the earth for forty days and forty nights. As the waters grew higher, the ark lifted and floated on its surface. The water overpowered the earth, covering the highest mountains by 15 cubits. All living things that dwelt on the earth perished. Only Noah was left, along with those who were with him in the ark. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Genesis chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. the animals in the ark and made a wind to blow over the earth and the waters began to recede and 150 days from the time the flood began the ark came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat the waters continued to subside and soon other mountain tops were visible After another 40 days, Noah opened the window at the top of the ark and released a raven, which flew back and forth until the waters had dried up. Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the waters had subsided. But the dove found no place to rest her feet and returned to the ark. So Noah brought the dove safely back into the ark with him. Noah waited another seven days and again released the dove. And that evening, the dove returned to Noah, and in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Noah waited another seven days and sent out the dove. Only this time, she did not return. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked out and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. After a year on the ark, God spoke to Noah, saying, Come out from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring forth every beast all the cattle, every bird, and everything that creeps on the ground, that they may multiply and replenish the earth. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings on the altar from every clean animal and every clean bird. I will never again curse the ground because of mankind, for the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. I will never again destroy all living things as I have done. As long as the earth remains, 
planting and harvesting, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. And the Lord God blessed Noah and his sons. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air, every creature on the ground, and all the fish of the sea will now fear you. I hand them over to you. Every living thing that moves shall be food for you. Just as I gave you green plants, now I give you everything. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made mankind in his own image. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and multiply on it. God spoke again to Noah, and the sons were with him. As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that came out of the ark with you, every living creature of the earth. I will establish my covenant with you that never again will all living beings be destroyed by a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. This is the sign of my covenant I am making between myself and you and every living creature for all generations to come. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature. The waters will never again destroy all living beings. After the great flood, Noah began to work the ground and planted a vineyard. As his vineyard matured, Noah made wine from the grapes he had planted. In one day, after drinking the wine, Noah became drunk, falling asleep, naked in his tent. Noah's youngest son, Ham, looked upon his father's nakedness and went out to tell his two brothers what he had seen. However, Ham's older brothers refused to look at their father's nakedness and proceeded to walk backwards into their father's tent with a garment to cover his naked body. Their faces were turned away, so they did not see their father's shame. When Noah woke up from his drunken state and learned what Ham had done, he cursed Ham's youngest son, Canaan. Cursed be, Canaan. A servant of servants he shall be to his brothers. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. The sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These three were the sons of Noah, and the whole earth was populated by them. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years, and then he died. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you 
and all living creatures of every kind, never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Genesis chapter 9 verses 13 to 15. After the great flood, the sons of Noah and their wives begin to repopulate the earth. And among their descendants was a mighty man, a leader among men, and a fierce hunter before the Lord. His name was Nimrod, and he was the great grandson of Noah. Through his son Ham, and Ham's son Cush, and the beginnings of his kingdom included Babel in the land of Shinar. At that time, the people of the earth spoke one language. And as it came to pass, they traveled from the east and found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there, desiring to make a name for themselves. With bricks and mortar we shall build a great city. And in our city we will build a tower with its top, reaching up into the heavens! We shall settle here. We shall not be scattered all over the face of the earth. As the people continued to build, the Lord came down to see their city and their tower. And the Lord said, Behold, the people are united, and they all share one language. And this is what they have started to do. Now nothing they set out to accomplish will be impossible. Let us go down and confuse their language so they might not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered the people all over the earth and the building of the city and the tower stopped. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because it was there God confused their language and scattered the people over the face of the earth. The Lord said, Come. Let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Genesis chapter 11 verses 6 to 9. 